This is another great request from Francoise Panto Jones. It's Ellen Hinsey's A Concise Biography of Tyranny, a beautiful dissection of the rise and fall of tyrannies, which, apart from the initial portrait of the poet, I've illustrated with a selection of tyrants, all but one of whom have been active in my lifetime. A Concise Biography of Tyranny Tyranny does not mind starting out small. It is indifferent to scale. Its dreams of grandeur are happily rehearsed in a child's theatre. There, tyranny has a full set of tin soldiers with which to prepare a catastrophe. One wears a gas mask, another a metal helmet. Hidden in a drawer away from the others is the drummer, whose head has been blown off. Tyranny has an awkward adolescence. It's all arms and legs and hot air. It talks of keeping the streets clean while it fills them with a litter of noise. Tyranny likes to have a hometown, a small cinema where its faithful can watch films in the evenings. Tyrannies learn slowly. It is only in young adulthood that they acquire the true benefits of decorum. Then they possess the ability to carry out their work like any proper business. In maturity, tyranny becomes a bona fide adult, endowed with a fully grown body, behind which it conceals a warehouse of regression. Tyranny's regression is simple, an infant's desire to impose its omnipotence on the world. Tyrannies are not good at ageing. Tyrannies stay young on a challenge. The thrill is lost when all the brave are dead. Tyranny in old age is never graceful. Surrounded by rusted cars and old foundries, it is a junk heap of promises. And, as in Roman times, its successor was already, years ago, slain. The mystery is why one finds, time and again, flowers on its grave. <laughs> 